Welcome to the SJ Child Show. This episode is sponsored by Water and Body Basics. Visit 3440 South, 5600 West, West Valley City, Utah. Mention SJ Childs today. On this episode of the SJ Child Show, I peel back the layers with Eric Bigger, former Bachelorette contestant and author of Change Your Mindset, Change Your Energy, Change Your Life, 100 Days of Wisdom, and Quotes to Shape Your Life. Enjoy the show. Hi, and welcome to the SJ Child Show. I'm your host, SJ Childs, and today I have a fabulous guest. For listeners and viewers, Eric Bigger, who some of you might know as a Bachelorette contestant, um, but whom I've learned is so, so much more than that, is so incredibly brilliant, um, has such an open mind, and just such a great message to share with us today. So welcome, Eric. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here on this Monday in uh we're here. Yeah, right? We made it. It's Monday. We made it. That's half the battle. Yes. <laughs> we woke up. That was the first battle, right? Getting out of bed on a Monday morning. Oh, well, let's get started by um, give us an introduction about yourself, you know, and who Eric is and where you started. Yeah, so to some of you, you might know me from The Bachelorette, season 13 with Rachel Lindsay. Uh, that really jump started my career or gave me more uh, eyes or attention on <laughs> person. However, uh, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Do anybody know about Baltimore? You know about The Wire, <laughs> the TV show, the hit TV show, which is a great show based in Baltimore, about Baltimore City and the good, the bad, and the indifferent in that area. Uh, I went to a junior college in Columbia, Maryland at Howell Community College where I played basketball. From there, I transferred to Hampton University, and I graduated from there in 2010, Megan Kunlali, in an mm-hmm. entrepreneurship degree, and I booked a one-way ticket. I graduated May 2010. I booked a one-way ticket to L.A. June 2010, and that's when my life changed and took off. I came to L.A. with a degree. Thought I knew it all. Didn't know anything about <laughs> Uh, and I went through a lot of ups, downs, struggles, setbacks, hardships, challenges that forced me to go inward, to look for a better way to survive, survive at the time, but also find a way to potentially thrive in life. And, uh, it was based on information, information changes situation. And Mm -hmm. from books like thinking we're rich as a man, think of the secret, uh, you know, philosophers and people like Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Eric Thomas, and just self, you know, healing and learning. All the greats, yeah. Experience in life and things happen and my intentions, you know, got better for myself and my life and things turned around eventually. And it took me seven years to get a break, you know, in LA. I didn't mm-hmm. come to LA for Hollywood or TV or fame. I really came to LA to get a uh MBA, a master's degree in business, that didn't work out. They wanted to work out a year. I didn't have that at the time. So I took a different route. You know, I, I worked many jobs from sneaker store clerk to um, promo modeling to background acting to even doing Uber. You know, I've done it all. Personal trainer by trade. I sold water machines. Shouts out to Kagan. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been through almost every phase of the journey of an individual trying to discover, unpack who they are and what they are so they can show up in this world with with purpose, right? Because sometimes we just go through life because we have to. And we don't know who we are. We don't discover what we want and what we need to feel fulfilled and have meaning in life. And so... I'm just happy to say through those ups, downs, those trials and tribulations, I'm here now talking to you guys. Absolutely. Information that I've discovered on my journey and um, it feels good. I love that. I absolutely love that. What a great journey too. And 
shows the courage and the strength you have to just head out on your own. I did very similar thing, just went out on my own afterwards and just discovered living in different places and different people and different careers. I think I've like had so many different jobs and careers as well. So you and I are just so much alike, Eric. It's just hilarious. Something else that we are alike now, on one of your other podcasts, I was listening and it, you had mentioned where you lived, um, that you love basketball, number one. Like, I don't love basketball. I, I do not love it. But what I did do, I was a massage therapist for about a decade and I worked for the Utah Jazz and I was their massage therapist for their chiropractor. And so I was listening to one of them and it said that you had a roommate that you lived with that was on the Utah Jazz, Right. Uh, Duran Williams and or rented or did something. Oh, about so <laughs> yeah, actually, that story was uh, I was that was my actual first job in LA. Okay, standing on the TV show Zach and Cody. Sweet okay, Life. yes, I was a stand-in for Duran. That's Williams. what it was. Okay, right. So I was standing in for him before he got the set to we kind of had the similarities at the time yeah so when he got there he knew what to do and so you got paid like <laughs> a day that was my first job in la so awesome it was set. i'm like well here we are um so it was fun i met oh, him in love yeah. with the power, but that's how that Durant yeah, but i just thought that was so funny that how would we like have like known the same person and everything you know in the middle of everything right going on um no that was a really fun time in my life too because I wasn't a basketball fan so when they came in I wasn't just like oh stardom you know I'm a little fangirl right now we won't deny that um but yeah with, with the basketball I just like I was so happy to tell you the truth I really wanted to be a 49ers massage therapist I really wanted to do that but I will, you know, I'll take the NBA. I'll take basketball. Like, I don't know if I could have handled a football player now. I'm only 5'2". <laughs> so you see, like, for people listening, if you listen to what she said, and I'm, I really want listeners to understand not only the law of attraction, but the law of assumption, right? So that's by Neville Goodard. But the law of assumption states that the more you assume something, the more it can become true. And that can be yeah. good or bad. So, so true. You had the intentions of being a massage therapist for the 49ers. Okay, cool. That didn't come. However, you were the massage therapist for the Utah Jazz, so you still was in a professional yeah. uh, environment with professional athletes that was on that frequency. Yeah. It wasn't the Niners, but it was the Jazz, which is a professional sports team. I love team. that. You see how that assumption or that intention and that vibration kind of matches? Exactly. Even if it wasn't exactly what you wanted, but it was what you wanted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you attracted it. You attracted it. And that's I the, love it. <laughs> you know, it's like, look at that. That's yeah. so that's a great story to share. I know. And I'm sorry that I shared it on your podcast to share things, oh, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. And a power of their mind, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, and I love that that's how um, you know, I live my life that way. You live your life that way. And so I think that's how it was so when I, you know, was listening um on the Michael Stein show and I was I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I really get this guy. Not only do I, you know, yes, I've, I am a huge Bachelor fan, but at the same time, like, when I really got to know you, I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to reach out to him. I've yeah. got to get in touch with this guy and talk to him because there's just so, yeah, so many uh, alikeness in our lives. Um, let's go back to something that you had said um, on uh, another thing about kind of your guidance through life and um, how you had good, you know, parents that were in your life, took care of you, paid, you know, food and clothes and everything, but you really kind of still didn't feel like you got like the push that was necessary or like interest, like they weren't really interested in you as much as they were interested in their own things going on. Yeah, I think, you know, now that I'm older, you know, there's a human need. I think Michael Stein talks about it. Uh, one of the human needs, I think for me, especially is connection, right? Mm -hmm. I want to connect to feel, to feel alive, to feel love, to feel meaning. And as a kid, I did well in school. So usually in my environment, kids who get attention, they don't do well in school. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was more, like I said, my mom took care of me and my sister, you know, she paid the bills, she took us to school. 
she even cooked food and dinner, but just the intimacy, sitting us down. How was your day, son? I love you. I'm proud of you. Same with my dad. My dad was a provider, but he wasn't a guider. So I didn't have no one, you know, intentionally telling me how to live life. They would tell me, you know, you got to call this person miss and mister and say your manners and say your grace and pray, you know, all the, you know, normal things. But I didn't get that. Like you said, they w- I didn't feel that my parents had the time, not that they didn't yeah. want to the time, or knew how to have interest in me outside yeah. of school and sports. Mm-hmm. So it took me on a journey to become that for everybody else. Yeah. They say people who are so intrigued about numerology, astrology, or always asking questions about another person is because they w- wish someone did that to them growing up. Yeah. Mm-hmm had the curiosity about film. And so I, I wanted someone to listen to me. I wanted someone to understand me. I wanted someone to love me, give me attention, give me acknowledgement, just to let me know that I matter to them and they care about me. So I became that for everybody, my friends, my family, whoever. I was like a father, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. not my body, you know, and it forced me to take on so much, which was good, but also bad because no one ever thought that I was down or I was feeling bad mm. because I carried the weight of everyone. Like, oh, he's yeah. fine. And all actually, I was really hurt probably more than anybody. <laughs> right, right. No, isn't that the truth? I was just going to say you did that for everyone, but did you include yourself? No, I did No, and that's the hardest part of being, empath- you know, an empath and being um, wanting to do good for others around you. In my case, it was... Um, you know, kind of like, this is who you need to be for everyone else. You need to serve them. This is your job. And so I was like, okay, okay. You know, and and that's what I grew up doing and grew up being. And then there was a point where I was like, well, wait a second. What about when I'm in line somewhere? Like, why do I have to rush through for the stranger behind me? Because I'm in, I'm so panicked that I'm not good enough or I don't deserve to be here. It's just ridiculous. And you know, luckily I have support in, you know, my close family that like my husband's always like you know, being a Leo as you know, you know, it's always just like, I'll roar in their faces. Like you have every right to be anywhere. Like he gives me that, the um, that I need and the kind of that backbone to say, yeah, you're right. I do. I, but I, that was like something really hard for me to unpack was that why don't I deserve, like, why can't I be somewhere and not feel the pressure from someone else because they deserve to be there more than me? It's crazy. Yeah, and, it, and it's, uh, it's, that's when uh, awareness comes in, the self-awareness of, you know, being aware of your thinking, like, where did that thought come from? And why am I thinking that? And why do I feel like I have to rush when someone wants something from me? And it's eight in the morning and I feel like I got to get this <laughs> right away. Yeah. And so just as of recently, I'm 33 years old and probably of last week and the week before, I went through a really different phase of creating boundaries, uh, being stressed out because of family. Mm-hmm. But when I really looked at that wound or that issue, I created it based on how I looked at it, how I perceived it. Yeah. And when I thought about my family, my family is fine. They're okay. Now, they might not be the way I think they should be, but mm-hmm. that's kind of my ego and how mm-hmm. I believe. But if I really sit back and think, you guys are okay. Yeah. I'm over here freaking out because I'm thinking things are out of whack. It should be a different way. Right. But that. also, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a part of codependency mm-hmm. that helped me live and survive life for so long as a kid and growing up and being a man before you was a boy and having to be responsible emotionally and mentally for others mm-hmm. or not having the real capabilities. I realized that my codependency comes from, I depend on people to depend on me so I can be myself. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, someone needs me. That makes me feel like, Oh, oh I can be. Yeah. Then I had to look, oh, so you still have a little bit of that still in there, Eric. You're still focusing on everybody else. So you don't have to depend on yourself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. So I had to realize I'm creating this scenario. I'm creating this narrative. And it's not really complex, but it is because the trauma I faced growing up, thinking that was my place, that was my position, the people pleaser syndrome. 
not mm-hmm. feeling worthy of love and affection, not knowing how to receive when someone wants to give to me. Yeah, that's so a hard one. Way of learning to be aware of, hold on, take your power back. They'll be okay. They're fine. Your mom and dad have been here longer than you, sir. So <laughs> <peace> out. <laughs> your sisters and your grandmother, they'll be okay. But are you okay? Yeah. Because I started taking it personal. Like, yeah, you guys don't even check on me. I'm out here by myself. And it's like, hold on. But you decide to check on them because that's something you choose to do. Yeah. So it's just, it also I get to the root of, I'm just, I'm a giver. That's just who mm-hmm. I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm a giver. And uh, it's a lot of stuff to unpack, but it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And it definitely, um pushed you into your career now or into your passions and what you're doing now. Let's talk about that. Where did that start? Where did you decide, okay, it's about me. I'm taking this into my hands. What can I do for myself? Yeah. So the universe is very interesting and funny and clever and smart (laughs) because on my journey before uh, the bachelorette, I was doing so much healing, right? So much work, reading books, going to seminars, uh, going to a healer to clean out my chakras and meditating, praying, all these things, right? So I feel like I had a lot of information about life and success, but I didn't have the experiences to match where I was at. So I feel like when the show came, it caught up to me, right? Mm-hmm. The experience caught up to my information. I already had the information. Yeah. Dr. Joe Dispenza says uh, knowledge is the precursor to experience, right? So I had a lot of knowledge, but I didn't have the wisdom because I didn't have the experience. So what happened was going on the show, I always was, I always was a leader, leader yeah. of, the, of my teams, basketball, football, baseball, how, whatever team I was on, I was the captain of the team. Um, I was the leader of my career of my friends. So I always cared about people more than I cared about myself. I knew that because I'm a Pisces, very emotional. Yeah. <laughs> you and I both. <laughs> and then I realized, and it wasn't me that pushed me to my purpose. It was, it was God. It was the universe pushed me to my purpose. When I went on TV, it put me in a position where I had to receive. Mm. I mean, I was gone for 10 weeks. We were in, I went to six countries. Oh, I know. Yeah. Asking me what you want to eat, what you want to drink. The, the, the truck is going to come pick you up. Make You know, it's like, oh, my God, I feel like a star. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was put in a are. position to think about what do I want? Yeah. Who was asking, what do I want? How can we help you? And then, you you know, you come off a show, you get all this momentum and success. You go to, like, studios, people paying you and flying you to come in. Oh, what do you need? What do you want to eat? And I'm like, that I realized that because all the output I was putting out was coming back, say, okay, now it's time for you to receive. Mm-hmm. You put out so much energy, it's time for you to get it back. And it like put me in a position where I had no choice but to ask for help. Hired a manager, had to get an agent, had, you know, had people helping me to grow myself in business. And so then, you know, uh, my healer said, well, listen, Eric, you've gotten to a place of success publicly and progress progress equals happiness <laughs> then it's your duty to give back the information to the people who deserve it mm-hmm. need it and i don't know if you're um are familiar with um human design so human design is kind of like astrology and yeah astrology. so i'm a three six smarter so i'm the role model so i have to literally go through everything to figure out what works and what doesn't work and so now i'm just here giving back what i've learned so i can help the world and everyone around me evolve, heal, and transform to their higher best self. Um, it's, been, it's, it's been great and it's been amazing. So I'm really passionate about helping people. I think yeah. having fame and being on TV and all those things is cool, but there's no real meaning in it if yeah. you're impacting people in an effective way, at least in my eyes. No, I love that. I think that's important for people to hear. I think uh, the people think that if you can, you know, get it on TV or whatever, then that would be the end all, right? But that's not the truth. Not what it seems, trust me. You had to work hard and plus you had to give of yourself and give of your heart 
which yeah. is one of the biggest jobs we do in our lifetime, right? Is, mm-hmm. is to give love and to open ourselves up to someone and be vulnerable to them. Um, and you went all the way to number f- like four, right? You were like three, yeah, four exactly. guys left, three guys left. And um, yeah, that must have been something that must have been really hard. I'm, I'm so sorry that that well, it didn't like, work out, but at the same was, time. It wasn't as hard as people expected because my heart was already broken before the show. Meaning because I didn't get that love I wanted from my mom. Not yeah. that she loved me. Sure. I, I didn't get the love that I thought I needed or wanted. Yeah. So going on the show actually healed me. I love that. So Rachel at the time, the love she did give me and the love I did receive actually helped my life. Yeah, and it definitely. My life. So when I left, yes, I was disappointed. Did we have a great time? Of course. But I knew two weeks prior to the end that we weren't going to be together because my spirit told me. Yeah. But it wasn't my reason being on the show wasn't to end up with the girl. It was to fall in love for the first time, to get that. That's why it's miracle season, because that love healed my body, <laughs> life, and changed my life. Because what all that. I was lacking was love from a woman. Yeah. And I got that and all my dreams came true after that. Aww. That's the and- power of love. Right. Are you dating now? Are you, what's yeah, your situation? I'm dating. I'm dating. I'm dating. Good. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I took a break. I was on a good 90 day fast of women, you know, <laughs> but you know, dating is different, you know, for me, for many reasons, but I'm into stimulation of the mind, you know, yeah. substance, conversations, um, People who somewhat got it together for themselves mentally, financially, yeah. professionally, because, you know, and someone who's secure with themselves because mm. of a lot of work or where I'm at or, you know, I have a lot of female followers. So if I'm dealing with a woman who's highly insecure, mm. be the best interest for me to date a person of that caliber because sure. my audience. But however, it's been it's been amazing because on this journey for me, you question people like are you dating me because of me or are you mm. dating me because of who I am in a social public space yeah but even if you don't know I'm from tv if you see my social media does that change your perception of me? and mm-hmm. nine times out of ten it does I don't care who, who you are mm-hmm. yeah, I like that it's like yeah but you're a human being you're going to change your perception based on what you see what yeah. you google and how you come off so I respect it but it was one of those things I had to get accustomed to and kind of accept for what it is. Um, and it's been, it's been cool. I've been kind of like slow, slowly, you know, progressing in, you know, certain situations, but I think the most important thing is conversation. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I was talking to my dad this morning, right before this interview that for me, the man that I am, you know, and I want to tell women out there and every guy is not the same, that you don't need physical intimacy to connect with a man. Yeah, like, I know it's it matters, but mental intimacy, emotional intimacy, is valuable and very important. Mm-hmm. I believe sex is amazing and it's great, but I don't want women to think that that's all they have to give to get a man to give them attention. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I'm I value the mental, the conversation, the connection, um, all those things come because actually building that makes the other part better mm-hmm, definitely it's all entwined and it's incongruent but when you're just providing the physical aspect that's great too that's not you know let's be real that's great but how long does that last if you yeah. don't have authors in the situation and so that's why i just want people to that's what i look look to yeah. and look forward to when i'm dating you know talking to women is like what's in your mind how do you mm-hmm. feel about yourself what do you think about life what would you do if a tragedy happened you know, it's, it's deeper than just someone looks and body is like, what's so in true. their soul and what's in their yeah. heart? My yeah. husband and I, we had known each other as friends before we started dating. And it was through, and this, we've been married for 12 years and together for 17. Wow. So kind of like almost lifetimes together now, you know, and um, it was like talking on the phone that really changed the game that he, we you start to have that intimacy through conversation, through intellect, through emotional um, vulnerability, you know, being, uh, sharing how your day was or having somebody even ask, right? (laughs) And it was just this strange, like, 
are we attracted to one another kind of thing after about, you know, four, three or four months. And you'll love this. We flipped a quarter to see whether we would date or not. Heads we date, tails we don't. Universe, it's all on you. <laughs> wow. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It's, it's been the best. And literally we make decisions, life, we make big decisions on that all the time because oh. we've done it for so long that we know when we go against the answer, it's disastrous. And it really is the faith that you put into it, the intentions, the idea, all of that. Um, so yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> and it's a beautiful relationship when you can have that connectivity with someone without being physically connected to them. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and honestly, for a lot of young men out there, you know, you want to have your fun, you want to do whatever you think is important for your ego or yourself. And you will have to experience some things before you get to a level of understanding mm -hmm. of knowing what works and what doesn't work. And you get to a point where you're still going to have your vices and you're going to be enticed in certain ways. But when you really pull the, pull the curtain back, it doesn't mean anything if you already done seen that view so many other times in different places. Yeah. So same view it just looks different because you're in a different arena. Mm -hmm. But when you know that, you can kind of like not be in a rush, but just appreciate just a woman. I think yeah. that's what I have to tell fellas and women, like let a man appreciate your presence. Mm -hmm. Like just talking to you, like feminine energy. For me, sometimes that's what I need. I just need to be around it. I don't need to have anything involved just i want to be around some women yeah because it's beautiful they say it's a man's world but it's a woman's universe and i, yeah, literally, I love that <laughs> literally run the world in the universe and mm -hmm. so that uh that that vulnerability that softness that is power because i think vulnerability is more powerful than confidence yeah definitely so it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, moment where you can be around a woman as a man um, and not want anything from her, but just the energy and the time. Yeah, definitely. That's no, I, I agree with that. And I think that in doing podcasts and getting to know people all over, like you said, um, it wouldn't do me well to be with someone who was jealous or constantly like, oh my gosh, who are you talking to? Why are you putting makeup on to go talk to that person yeah. or something silly like that? You know, no, he bought me all these dresses. He's the one that, you know, got like, he's my biggest supporter. And wow. without that, how, like I could, yes, I'm, I'm a very independent and strong woman on my own, but I also have a whole, like it, I have a whole piece, like it, for me, you know, our little family is just like what made me so whole. I grew up as an only child. And so I think that searching for that connection was indefinite for me. Like I, I can remember searching way too early in my life, you know, oh, is this person going to be the one? Is this, you know, and I was always just wanting that connection to be made with people. And then, um, and that is funny, going back to our Michael Stein conversation, I was on his show and he, you know, said, what was the one thing, you know, when you were little that you would want? And I said to make connections with people. And then at the end, he said, look how many connections that you make now. You don't only make connections for yourself, but for others, you know, you change uh, families' lives around the community and your assistance for autism and awareness and things like that. So it's so amazing to yes, have that intention, not know how it's going to show up and then accept it and appreciate it and just love it for what it is when it's here. Right. Yeah, it's beautiful because you get to really, when you just be present with someone, you really get to learn about life through them with them without even trying to. Yeah. I was talking to a female, uh, via DM, you, you know, via DM yesterday and we had so much in common. But, you know, when I started to follow her, I was like, man, this girl is different, like her energy. But we just started going down a rabbit hole of like books and astrology and uh, personality types and all these things. And I'm like, I was like, oh, I love this thread. I love this conversation. She's like, yeah, I do too. But it was just like, it, it was flowing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want anything from, you know, yeah. I was curious. We were just having a general discussion. I was like, this is what men and women need back in our lives. That, and just people in general. We always focus on what's not working, what's not happening, what's bad, what's, what doesn't work. It's like, okay, what is working? Yeah. 
is positive? What is amazing about life we're living? How can we change the forecast of our minds to say, you know what? We know what's out there, but let's focus on what's good that we have in our life. I love that. It helps so much. So much. I have a 15 second rule. So I don't let bad thoughts stay in my mind for longer than 15 seconds. Because I've learned that obviously they come to you. You know, what you think about is brought into action and into fruition. Um, and so, and just recently, I would say like in the last week or so that I heard that on something and I said, that is it. That's my new rule. No, 15 seconds. I could think about a situation that I might not have liked or that I feel ripped off or whatever, but I'm not going to repeat it. Number one, when you go repeating things to others about all these bad things that are happening to you. Oh, 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 you're just bringing more of that to yourself to keep continuing to happen. Um, and so I, I've been really trying to um, be like strong in my mind, you know, and just say, okay, I can give this like a couple of thoughts about it that I have to move on. No more talking about it, thinking about it, let it go. Yeah, so. and it's beautiful when you're aware of your thinking. I think that's the most important thing because <sighs> people tell me things. I'm like, who's telling you that? Why do you believe that? Because it's true. I said, who? <laughs> it says right here, Rin. I was like, well, who's giving them that information? Yeah. What is your body telling you? There's a, uh, yes. a body test you can do, even tapping. You know, you can tap. Yeah. Your hands. Like your body doesn't lie, you know. You gotta yeah. listen to what your soul and that gut is telling you. Like, mm -hmm. oh, but this person is an expert, and this person is my mom and my dad. I'm like, I hear you, but what are you? What is your soul telling? Yeah, absolutely. I think people ignore that because they're afraid to be rejected or they're afraid not to fit in. And I get it. I've been there. I was a people pleaser for 29 years. <laughs> but what I will say is. I say he or she who feels it knows it, you yeah, know, and if something doesn't feel right as a reason. It doesn't have to, that reason doesn't have to agree with everybody outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. It just has to agree with yourself and you have to internalize that from your perspective. So you can have confidence in you. You know, it's true. Definitely. For you. Have you been to a kinesiologist before or done any kinesiology, which is kind of like the, your body uh, answering uh, questions? Uh, for you? Where is it at? Uh, the, the chiropractor that I worked for, he did kinesiology. And so I was able to learn so much from this him. Book, uh, this is one of the books, The, uh, the Vibrational Universe. In Power versus Force. It talks about, they did a study. Maybe it, was, maybe it was 500 people, 250, they gave vitamin C, like packaging envelopes. And then the other 250, they gave vitamin C, but it wasn't vitamin C. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. The, a test on them. And basically the test came back that the people, I forgot what the results were, but they, they did some things. <laughs> I forgot how it worked. You're just like me. <laughs> Here's this great idea, but I can't tell you the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm thinking of, because I'm thinking of like two things in one, because then they'll have something where you'll say your name and you'll do like, I think you're touching yourself. You're doing something physically, like, you, like you said, yeah. you verify if it's true or not. And you can say your name or you can say, oh, I'm this age. And it, yeah. oh, I think it's, uh, I forgot, damn. But you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, um, kinesiology is like muscle, basically muscle yeah. memory and muscle testing. So you can go and like, I, I used to be able to do it a lot faster than I can now, only because I haven't practiced in so long. But yeah. I remember doing like, push-ups and like if you can like really you can test yourself you know like because you can use that force in your muscles to get answers and things silly like that but yeah that's incredible something else that you well first of all you're doing fitness you're a one-on-one -on -one coach right now right and you have yeah. courses so let's totally talk about that so we can cover it and then we're going to talk about one more thing got it yeah so you know I'm a one-on-one -on -one, you know mindset coach transformation coach i don't like to say life coach because it's kind of like general but yeah i believe everything's in the mind and once you get everything in the mind to translate to the body it can transform your life mm -hmm. so i have that available i have a few books out uh 100 yes. days of wisdom uh is one of my books uh, I should not get it. Ah. now these are your quotes yeah this is my that's quote. what i was going to talk about next so that's yeah. great yeah, so this is my quote book, 100 Days yes. of Wisdom, 100 Days to Live a More Inspired Life. These are quotes that 
came for me when I was on my journey of self-development. Yeah. And I just put the words into a book because these came from videos I shot years ago, which is interesting. Aww. When I was in a different space, I was yeah. doing videos. Um, and then from that, I have a course that's attached to the book. You can get a nice package where each day in the course, I'm talking about day one of 100 Days of Wisdom. I read the quote out loud. I break it down, interpret it, analyze it. And you get a, a spill of what it means, <sighs> my, my, my back history on it. And then you can internalize it in your own way. Yeah. So that, uh, I have another, another book, uh, a workbook. Sorry. Uh, transformation, change your mindset, change your energy, change your life. That. Like literally a workbook. Yeah. 28 days to reclaim your power. And so this is a transformation process. So I have those. Um, but yeah, the one-on-one coaching is, is, is something I'm passionate about. Like it's, it's like you and I being on Zoom right now. Yeah. And we, you have an hour to kind of like, I, I debrief for you, give you things to do and just we talk. And we get to the root of your problems. We acknowledge it. We accept it. And I give you tools and insights to execute it and apply it. And then if you want to continue to build, we can. I have other things in store yeah. and process for you to get. So we can develop and build rapport together. But the end goal is for people to be well, for people to heal, and for people to transform their life with the own discovery of their mind and answers that they already have within them. I'm not doing anything but giving you access to yourself by giving you the right questions, the right tools and thoughts to think about to change your life. So I'm just really passionate about it. And it's fun. Like this dialogue with you and I is is, is great because I can tell you're in alignment with the frequency that I speak on of things. And it makes sense. Yeah, I love that too. I love like finding like-minded, you know, souls out there that you can connect with in your tribe and everything. So, and like I said, I think that I've been more and more open to receiving those things, knowing that I deserve them. And that's my new um, take on myself is that it doesn't matter that I'm a, a house mom from Utah. Like I'm building my platform. I can have whoever I want on my show. I don't have to be fearful of them being on more of a pedestal than I am. I'm building my own pedestal up for myself is what I'm learning to do. And so I think that that's a a big self-discovery also. I love your quotes. I also do a daily quote on my pages um, every day called Today's Mission. And I put quotes on there all the time. So we'll have to um, become, we'll I'll friend request you after this and (laughs) we'll be able to share quotes back and forth. Absolutely, let's do it. And I also have, you know, a a miracle mindset guide that I get free to people to tap in with my audience Mm -hmm. and what I do and we we build rapport. Because I think a lot of times when people see us, you know, you know, you and I in a position, you have a podcast, we want to help, we want to give. I want people to know that what we do is real, it's authentic, but absolutely, I'm not doing it just to do it. I'm doing it because this is, I really want to see people win and happy. I think the, the greatest pain that I can experience that I've experienced on my journey is having success and being at a certain space in your life but then not having people around who understand what that feels like a hundred percent and it's like yeah I'm good but he she her they're not and it's not that I gotta take myself down to kind of feed them it's just like I want to give this information so everybody can feel this feeling, it has nothing to do with success in life, is being successful as a human being, as an individual for yourself. Absolutely. It feels good. And I think people deserve to feel that energy of feel good without having money, without alcohol, without sex, without fame, just yourself. Like I feel good. I woke up today full of gratitude and I have things in my life that I, I want to change, I will, but however, I'm good. Mm-hmm. And feel that on a consistent basis and having the tools to kind of put you in that direction throughout, you know, yeah, life. definitely. No, I completely agree. In fact, I was listening so much. I totally forgot what I was going to say, but that's the, that's the great thing about these kind of conversations is that you just, you listen and then your heart hears so much more than if you're listening to respond to people, right? You just open yourselves up completely for, for kind, these kinds of conversations and topics, 
where could people find your courses and things like that if they wanted to um, to take more of a look at that? Yeah, so everything is available uh, on my links and on Instagram at Eric Bigger. Also, on my coaching page is E Bigger Speaks. You can just click the links. You got everything from the one on one coaching, the Miracle Mindset Guide, the ebook for 100 Days of Wisdom, the ebook for the transformation, physical copies for the transformation book you can get on Amazon, the physical copies for uh, the 100 Days of Wisdom are coming out soon. And of course, they're all on that link. Click the link. And we can we we can join, and you guys can be a part of my journey. So love it. Uh, and I'm always I'm into meeting new people and for people to tell yeah. their story. And because as I continue to coach, I also continue to grow and mm-hmm. learn. Right? I yeah. I say I'm always a student, never the teach, never the master. Yeah, I love you know, that. The more yeah. we learn, the more we earn. And I'm not talking about money; I'm talking about wisdom. Yeah, wisdom spins and and, and circulates in the universe for. Yeah. Life. Definitely. And I remind, I remembered what I was going to say is that in sometimes when you are on the journey of self-discovery, of self-awareness and perspective, like you said, sometimes you raise your vibration and it's not even your fault, but it becomes isolating because everyone else just isn't on that same level. And they don't even, you know, because you don't see them coming around anymore and you don't hear from them as often but they don't know because they're still in the same place. And that's what it is. It's you either want to move or you want to stay. And, and, and so that's it's right. you, you isolate to elevate. Yeah, and it's true. The elevation is great, but it's also lonely. Yes, to be honest. it is so true. Because I don't want people to think like, oh yeah, but it's like, it gets lonely because you you cannot connect with someone who doesn't understand at the level of your perspective or perception. Yeah. So if I'm saying something to someone and they're offended, that has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. I also can allow myself to continue to connect with someone of that caliber because then that affects my frequency and how I move exactly. forward. And we don't need that. And so there's a time and place where you can meet and talk to those people who are around. And some people just, they don't want to change and that's okay. Yeah. That's why unconditional love is so important and having oh, so true race. Like, I don't want you to be like me. I don't want you to be, I don't want you to live up to my aspirations for you. I just want you to whatever. Cause that's what I think I've done in the past. My family mm-hmm. intentionally give what I think they want. Like, yeah, I don't want that sacrifice yourself. There, there's a, there's a quote that says sometimes in life we go hard for the wrong things. But what I do know is direction is better than speed. So let me tell you, people out there that's busting their tail, sacrificing and working hard for your family just to make all the money so they can be happy. They probably don't even want that. They probably just want your time and your energy and give, they want to hug and they want to eat food with you and talk about the Mm -hmm. good times. Yeah. You know, to, to the guys that think you got to have all the money in the world for a girl to love you. No, a real woman just wants your connection a man who cares about her and her well-being. Yeah, money is great. Yeah, someone mm-hmm. who deeply listens to her. So sometimes we get caught up in our own reality of what we think life is and what I've done. Sometimes you got to sit back and just see, like, maybe they don't really want money. They want time. And maybe in the time, they don't really want food. They just want conversation. Yeah. And maybe in conversation, they don't want, you know, intimacy. Maybe they just want uh, consistency. Right? Yeah. So it's always Absolutely. if we change the way we look at things, things change. So yeah. And is you're gonna be a great husband, dad, if that's where you if you're interested in ever having kids, yeah. things you just have a really great spirit and a great um uh, you know aura around you. And I'm so honored and pleasure to have you here today to spend this time um, getting to know you more and just, uh, yeah, I, I, it was so, it was so much fun. It feels like so much time is already, you know, it feels like no time has passed and already been <laughs> a lot of time has passed. So thank you so much um, for being here with me today. And I hope we can stay in touch and yeah, check up on each other like for said, sure. Thank you again for the opportunity. I yeah. appreciate the spirit and your aura as well. Thanks. And it feels good to talk to someone that gets it. Yeah, well, yeah. we will definitely be in touch. And, and we need yeah. more conversation and discussions like this so people can see it, 
not only they can see it, they can feel it. And by yes. the feeling it, it does something within them to change something in their world for their benefit. So. Yep, exactly. I love it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so much. And um, we'll be in touch for sure. Have a good Thanks, one. Thanks, Eric.